Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar, okay? Uh, grab a pen and paper, make sure you're in a comfortable seat and you're gonna need your phone, okay? Because I'm gonna move really quickly. I've got a lot of slides, a lot of information to give you. It's just been fully updated, so you're gonna need to take photos to keep up of some of the slides. So make sure you've got your camera ready, please. Okay, let me know you can see and hear me. You should be able to see a poll on the screen as well. As everybody settles in, I'm gonna update uh, the attendees. We've got Sivo, Raf, uh, PJ, I haven't seen you in ages, I don't think. Oruna, hello again. John, Adrian, Shanti, Andrew, Philip, John, Swidha, Fred, Sanj, Phil, David, uh, welcome everyone. Let me know which parts of the world you're from. Let me know you can see and hear me loud and clear so I can begin. This webinar is about investing. Okay, now the whole world at the moment is going investment crazy. Now, for somebody like me who's been around long enough, I know they all wanna learn. The reason I know what they wanna learn is because this webinar is gonna combine uh, all my eight, all the best bits from my 18 books on investing. So you don't have to buy them, you don't have to read them. I'm gonna give it all in this webinar. In fact, I'm gonna even show you how to download this for free. Okay, this was one of many, many international bestsellers I've had. So I know people wanna learn about investing, but nobody wants to read books anymore. They want it on video. So the whole point of this webinar is that I distill all of that. So in 60 minutes, we sort out your investing, whether it's gonna, whether you're a beginner or you're a multimillionaire, and we sort it out through video, which is how everybody wants to learn. We sort it out, whether it's a side business for you, whether it's your pension, whether you're just starting out and want always to have your money working harder for you so you're doubling your income, basically. Okay, that's the eventual goal. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the research uh, reports which show what works and what doesn't. Ultimately, all you want to know about is what works in investing and what doesn't. What does the research show? So that's what I'm going to show you, okay, on all of this. Uh, and that's the entire point of this webinar. So grab pen and paper, make sure it's quiet, turn off the TV, make sure nobody else is using the broadband. We're talking, we're here to uh, and make money, okay? So if there's something more important than that, then uh, uh, you shouldn't be on this webinar, you should be doing that instead, right? So please focus with all your energy, there we go. Now I said we wanna know about this from around the world, and if you want proof to wanna know about it, that's me in South Korea before the lockdown. Uh, that was taken last, uh, last year, okay? So well, the whole point is, if everybody around the world wants to get onto investing, when you see the stock market hitting all time highs and they're all going crazy about Tesla and bloody Bitcoin uh, and all the rest of it, and they're now suddenly realizing, hey, uh, if I bought that stock at the right time, these Americans keep becoming millionaires from stock investments. Uh, we thought it was property you had to do. How the hell are they doing this? What's going on? So obviously everybody's interested. So let's just make sure we don't mess it up because actually, most people, they'll read the headlines, they'll still mess it up. So let's make sure we do not mess it up. And that's the point of what I'm about to teach you in this. Okay, we're gonna sort your investments out. Welcome everybody else's numbers are still coming through and coming up and up and up. Welcome all of you, right? So I'm gonna summarize that intro in one second. Quick piece of important information. This is not individual stock advice because I do not know you individually. So it's not individual stock advice. Please, please understand that. Um, uh, uh, in terms of what I am saying. Like I said, pen and paper and a camera you're gonna need. One other thing I'm gonna suggest, when you make your money from investments, and I've said this to people for the last 20 years, uh, and I've even hosted events where I've said, look, I'm gonna teach you how to do it, but I want you to consider from your profits, making a small donation to whatever charity is important to you. For me, it's this one. It looks after widows and orphans. I'm the co-chairman alongside uh, Lord Bill Amoria, who's the president of the Confederation of British Industry, uh, and it was set up by Lord uh, Lumba. Okay, so that's the one for me. Because, and the reason I say this is because uh, investment management is the most useless profession in the world. Making money from the labors of other people by becoming a shareholder in their companies is probably the most morally repugnant uh, way of making money, and it's the easiest hard money you'll ever make. Therefore, we better do something more fulfilling. It'll be soul destroying as well for you. And if you don't believe um, that I actually mean that, well, I've said it on my various uh, uh, BBC interviews as well. So it's not just me trying to virtue signal to you guys. I've said it time and time again. I'm in the most useless profession. So please bear that in mind as you settle into your seats, please. Uh, uh, think about doing something useful with that money as well. Obviously secure your charity begins at home, secure your family, uh, but after that, think about good causes, right? Now, let's get on to the meat of it, pen and paper. 
People, like I said, worldwide want to know what I'm about to show you. I know this because these books sell around the world. So I've compressed it all into this webinar and all the research as well. And ultimately, it comes down to these things. The key to investment success, one, we're going to filter, filter, filter. The problem is some factors are more important than others. So people get confused. What stock should I buy? So what do they end up doing? They go in to a journalist. They use word of mouth. Those are two of the worst ways to risk your capital, your hard-earned money. is word of mouth and, oh, I'll just look on an internet website and uh, you might as well just look on bloody TikTok, okay? Or I'll just trust a journalist. He's a journalist for a reason and not a fund manager, right? So we're not going to do that. I want you to be your own fund managers, right? I want you to manage your own money. Stop giving it to fund managers. I'm going to prove to you why you can do it better than they can. Their hands are handcuffed. And you think, oh, no, I'll give it to an expert. It's too difficult. It's too difficult. They want you to think it's too difficult because they want to earn the fat fees. Stop doing it. Thank you very much. But stop doing it. OK, now, th the factors we're going to filter for is how do we know which one of these is important? when it comes to valuation of a company. Is a company overvalued uh, uh, or is it still cheap? And we know a company can be overvalued and still generate 700%. Let me look at Tesla as an example. And in any event, what do these damn things mean? Should we be looking at the share price relative to earnings? In other words, profits, earnings equals profits, okay? Or PEG, which is share price relative to, share, uh, to profit growth or share price to book value. Book value, very popular with Warren Buffett. But it can't surely be just one of these things because we know, as I said, undervalued companies might be undervalued because they're rubbish and overvalued companies skyrocket, right? So we've got to solve that. And we don't want to spend hours doing this. I don't want to read. I do not like reading journalist comments on companies, all right? And we don't, we've got better things to do. I'd rather play with my son than do any of uh, uh, that kind of stuff, all right, than, than looking at discount cash flows or price to revenue sales, okay? But we also have got another problem. If we're gonna filter, filter, filter for pure companies, you know, the best, there's 9,000 companies uh, uh, around the world which I look at. How do I filter that quickly in, well, 30 seconds, okay? Uh, given that some factors of growth, sales growth, right? We know, is, is that important? Well, we know companies with diminishing sales might uh, uh, rise and, and vice versa. But yet we all have a gut instinct, at least to know that, well, cheap companies are probably better than expensive ones. High growth are probably better than low growth companies. Probably. OK, there's going to be exceptions to those. But are we really going to sit around and get a master's degree in economics to learn cash flow and earnings and sales and go through all those formula? You don't want to do that. Of course, you bloody don't. Uh, uh, there's free tools and resources which will do it all for you, thankfully. And that's not all. We're going to have to filter according to income. How do we know uh, how important dividends are? Do companies who pay dividends do better than companies that don't? Are companies which are profitable better than ones that don't, uh, which aren't? Well, wait a minute. Amazon was unprofitable for years and yet has made many millionaires from its shareholders. Thank you very much, Amazon. You know, I'm going to let you into an embarrassing little secret. It's not been my intellectual property. I've not invented anything. Um, it has not been my ability to play musical instruments or command vast armies or uh, 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 anything like that, which has made me the most money. It has been it has been uh, it has been riding on the coattails of clever people at other companies that I've bought shares in. You know what? My day job, I could have just stopped, and just all I should have done is just given the money to those people. They were, oh, they were always cleverer than me and riding off the back of their successes, I became, I made money. Uh, yeah, I know, I mean, it's not exactly a great way to live a life, uh, but I do useful other things anyway. What about momentum? Look, uh, how do you explain the companies which go up 100, 200% when they don't pay dividends, they're loss making uh, uh, and they're overvalued? Well, momentum has got to be a factor, but that can't be the only factor. I don't want to risk gambling on a company which is shooting ahead, yet, unfortunately, whilst it's firing and shooting ahead, at the same time, uh, 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 is not producing any profits. That's a bit too risky for me. I don't want to gamble. I do not gamble with my pension, with my son's inheritance, okay? I do not gamble. Just so you know, I am not a speculator. Uh, and if you want to know speculators, I'm not one of them, right? So given we've got that, then we've got statistics. What about insiders? What about by company size?
Do smaller companies make more money than bigger ones? Journalists will tell you they do, and so they'll do an article just on that one factor. The problem and the reason I don't want you to ever read journalists' comment is this. They will pick one or two or three of these factors because it's too much hard work to pick them all, right? And they'll mention a company because they've got a file copy and their editors on their neck and all the rest of it. And so they'll go a nice little headline grabber and they'll go on the internet and they'll look up good headlines, which give them good SEO. And they'll say, right, 10 companies you should buy now, which are small and you've never heard of. Sounds sexy, doesn't it? Because they know human psychology loves stories. We're not going to do any of that because it's your money. You're going to manage your own money. You're going to be your own farm manager, your own stock rate. You're going to manage your own money. If you start following those kind of stories, you're going to blow up and you're not going to make returns. Okay. Uh, uh, how do we find companies which don't all move lockstep in with each other so that we're limiting our risk? How do we find companies which on average, year on year, outperform the market but aren't very volatile? So they give a consistent average return. Oh, Albert, surely that's all that's important. No, that would be backward looking. We need to know that their consistent growth will continue in sales and profit. Wait, Alpesh, this is the point at which people say, I'll just give my money to an expert. Don't do that. I'm going to show you in 45 minutes how you're going to be the expert. And I tell you what, if I can't turn you into an expert, and trust me, I know I can, I know I can, because if I couldn't, these wouldn't have become international bestsellers around the world and the Financial Times wouldn't have published them. There is a global demand for the knowledge I'm giving because people want to be experts. So let's get on with it. And I'm going to reveal a slide which I've never shown anybody. It's a secret which I've never given anybody before. The question becomes, how do you know what works? The answer is, it's been researched. Are you, do you really think, given the trillions of wealth that can be created from the stock market, you really think nobody ever bothered researching what works and what doesn't? Do you think they were looking on TikTok and Twitter to see uh, uh, what, what some 20 something was saying as to what works? Do you really think that? No, and by the way, I'll give you a free download of this. Uh, I'm not linked to Tweety Brown, by the way. Uh, it's just research they did. I've published it in my Financial Times columns before. What has worked in investing? It's a 60-page study. But look, who wants to read? Nobody reads nowadays. They want videos. So I'll tell you the findings from it, and I'll tell you what to do for 2021 and give you the process by which you do it so you become an expert and you can run your own fund. By the end of 60 minutes from this, you can be your own fund manager. All right? You can start asking friends and family even for capital and go get FCA regulated and become a billionaire fund manager, right? That's my promise to you because you'll have learned everything that you need to know about investing. Because there is so much bullshit in my industry about people pretending to make a lot of noise and I'll show you uh, about that. So what has worked in investing? Studies of investment approaches and characteristics associated with exceptional returns. I'm gonna share the research with you, but more, who cares about research? You want the end result. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the practical information. And by the way, just so you know the kind of research that I look at uh, on which I based the, uh, all those factors, how do I know what's important? Because when I filter, 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 there's so many factors. So how do I know if book value is important and what values are important? Well, we looked at the research done by not just these people, not just this uh, organization, but many others. Okay, many others. Let me distill it for you because you, you're too busy. And, well, you're not a geek anyway. Why should you read my books and read my FT comms all the rest. Let me just distill it for you and cut to the chase. Uh, uh, so we looked at the research and we said, well, for instance, through every single one of those factors, every single one of these factors, uh, uh, we went through it and said, right, which one of these does the research show is important and what values are important to generate returns? For every single one, there wasn't one of them. It's not just only price sales. Some of these were relevant, some of them, were too insignificant an impact on share price. That's some, but not enough. Okay, so how do we find out what's important and how do you weight it? That's what we did, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to simplify it, simplify it. I'm going to cram it all into 40 minutes, all right? And it's going to be dead bloody easy. And at the end of it, you're going to go, oh, I'll push. Why didn't I find you earlier? Right? So stock selection criteria. What if a company is overvalued based on its book value? Book value is just if you burnt the company today and sold everything, what would you get in the open market? Look at this. The returns, uh, average returns, 87%. 53%, 28%, now we're starting to get um, interested. So what we did is we said to ourselves, right, certain of these values are important, but we don't just want 30% in a year. My target is for my global stocks is 40%. So let's start off with the ones which are already gonna likely generate us 30%, 
And then let's filter down even more to get better than even that, right? So you don't just look at, list. what I'm saying is you don't look at one factor and the factors we're gonna look at, I'm gonna tell you and how important they are. So if the book value was higher than that, we didn't give it up. And by the way, this is just one of the factors I'll go through. I'll just show you a summary first and then I'll give you the nitty gritty and what comes out of it. So what else did the research show? This is how proper research is done. It looks bloody boring. OK, uh, uh, it's you're not going to find it on websites and you're not going to find it in stock tipping magazines because they'd lose all their bloody readers. I mean, do you want academic research? You know who did this? You know who did this? Uh, the importance uh, of dividend deals in country selection by Michael Kepler. You're not going to uh, do you read the Journal of Portfolio Management. Of course you don't. That's my job, not yours. OK, and so what they did and I have put this all into information, which you by gut instinct always knew you knew that different returns from different countries and different companies based on the dividends they pay, the income they generate, right? That some will generate and give you an 18% return, others will give you just 5%. Well, we wanna stay away from those countries and we wanna to go to the countries which are gonna give us higher average returns. And even then, that's not enough, that's not enough because 18% isn't good enough, that doesn't hit my 40. So I want the companies which give me the good book value returns of 30% plus, plus the good dividend yields. You see why? Because for every single one of these factors, I need to know to filter. For, remember what I said, filter, 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 right? So how do we do it? Like I said, we've got the research, then we went through it on every single piece of it. And by the way, in case you're wondering, well, what about you, Alpish? Are you any good? So my my picks since 2004 have been independently verified by Financial Times award-winning award winning software company. They've verified them. Independent of me. It's not my company. I don't own that software company. Uh, 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 and they verified it independently. And those are the returns. Well, since 2016, it's gone even higher and higher, as you'd expect. If you just look at the markets, okay? So just so you know, it bloody works. I've published it openly. Uh, it's openly out there. It's not some secret uh, uh, which is out there. It's publicly out there in Russian. If you want it in Russian, you can get it in Russian, right? So the Financial Times got um, distribution rights to sell my uh, uh, know-how in, in Russian. And I'm not even sure what language that is. I think it's simplified Chinese. Okay, so the FT sold it into uh, uh, that language is what they go, FT, sold it into Chinese as well. Yeah, people wanna know this stuff. So how do you do it and what's the important part of it? Well, first of all, did you think nobody's ever researched that certain com countries do better than others? Well, which ones are they? And of course it's gonna vary year to year. For a start, I wanna make sure I'm looking at global companies. Why? Because there are some French bloody companies which will do 73% for me potentially or 39% or 69%. So I can't just pick UK companies, okay? Um, IX says, what are the, they're even higher since 2016. Well, you only have to look at the markets. I'll, I'll update that right up to 2020, uh, IH. Okay, um, uh, uh, all right, so there you go. Now, what I'm giving you is something which is a track record, which is when we looked at the countries, all of this, I then said to people, look, I've got this research. I then published it. And then this was in 1999. I published this bit and said, you better start looking outside the UK alone. All right. Doesn't make me a genius. <laughs> all right. So many people had said that, but I backed it up with the research behind it. And not only that, I've got a 21 year track record to go with it. Right. They don't hand those things out like lollipops. We went through every criteria, including price earnings ratios. I'll let you download this research report if you want to look at it as well. Uh, uh, and that included compound annual returns for the lowest. So that, look, there is research which shows undervalued companies as a general rule, but there are exceptions, tend to do better than overvalued ones. But 14% isn't enough for us, is it? We're not 14, we want 40. So how do we get those higher returns? Well, we're going to filter amongst the ones which had the lowest PE ratio. There were obviously some which did better than others. So we're going to then filter based on sales, for instance, based on book value, based on growth, revenue growth, cash flow, all of the factors which the research showed were important, okay, which were important and which generated consistent returns based on research. 
Now, some of it's obvious. Obviously, when you say to people that company is cheaper than the other one, all other things being equal, we'd want to put our money on the cheaper one if we didn't know anything else. But we also, like I said, know that can't be the only factor. The problem that we face in the market at the moment is this, and it's, it's this headline really sums it up. UBS rich clients get Goldman PIMCO strategies with no extra fee. Is There is a group of Rich people who get access to UBS, Goldman Sachs, because they've got millions in the bank, and obviously those people aren't going to give it away for free. Okay, my job is to take that information, give it to you guys. I get that information because as a fun magic, you do. There it is. Okay, and I'll give it to you to download as well. JP Morgan's Guide to Markets for this year, I got I, I, they give it to you. Why? Well, they're going to give it to funds like us because they want us to invest through them. They want to show us how clever they are. Well, it's not my research, so I have no problems giving it to you. Then I'm going to give it to you. I have no problems sharing the insights with you, and that's what I'll do. And in case you're wondering whether, oh, 1999 is a long time ago. Yeah, well, been doing it ever since anyway, okay? And there's a reason to keep having you back on. Um, that was my own show on Bloomberg with Sally, and this is me on her show. Uh, they go on the beep. Uh, the problem becomes this. Even if you're just tracking an index, and that's fine for most people, right? But we want to do better than that. Let's say you're just tracking an index. This is this year in the major indices. I'll just move my fat face, but I'll make it smaller. Um, there you go. Right? The major problem becomes this. You get even the index wrong, and the difference is about 60%, right? Because that's one index which is up 40%. 6%, and that's the UK market, which is down 10% this year, right? So we're going to have to not just simply be index trackers. There's another reason we can't just be index trackers. A lot of people out there think, oh, just track an index. Now, on the whole, that's fine, except that indices sometimes go, index are just a basket of stocks, okay, which goes sideways for a long period of time. And you get the wrong bloody index, and you're going to be poor. That's a poverty gap for if you're American, you probably did about 46% this year. How do I know that? Well, it's a pretty good estimate of what you've done because you've probably tracked the index as a reasonable assumption. As an American, obviously, some will have done exceptionally well, some will have done poorer, but as an average, it's a probably good guesstimate that an American tracked uh, uh, the US indices and got about 46%. If you're British, your fund manager, you can check it, probably lost you about 10%. Some of the funds, will have done better, some will have done lower, or your own pension has probably gone down about 10%. Maybe you had one or two great winning stocks, but the vast majority won't have been. Sadly, that's the truth. My job is to get you from that into that area. All right, it's as simple as that. That's a simple job, that's a simple job. And I'm gonna appeal to the research that I have and the logic, okay, uh, 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 to teach you how to do it. Right now, why is this important? Assume you plan to invest over 10 years. That's what I look over. I look at over a 10 year period for myself and a 15 year period for my young son, right? 10 years. Now, and with my help, let's say you make 20% per annum. Some of that's gonna come from the markets anyway. And we're not even talking about 40%, which is what I expect from the US. I'm talking about poultry 20%, which is what I expect from UK stocks alone. Some years you'll get more, uh, like 2021, I expect, but let's let's see. And some years you'll make less. Nothing extravagant, nothing pessimistic. We're averaging it out, all right? Uh, don't take my word for it. Look at the bloody markets anyway. Look, there you go. Okay, this is not me saying you're going to get it. The market will generate some of that, right? Let's say you've got 100K. Some of you will have 10K. Divide all my figures by 10 then. So in your 401K, SIP or ISA, so it's tax-free. If you don't know how to open one, go to Backlow Stockbrokers, Halifax Stockbrokers, or whatever stockbrokers, and they'll show you very simple terms how to open one. It's just like owning a bank account. All your earnings are tax-free, therefore they compound at a higher rate. It's obvious. You Let's say you plan to add one and a half thousand pounds a month, because you're fairly well-to-do. If you don't, divide by 10 if you're you know one-tenth of this. Uh, at the end of 10 years, you'll have a million pounds. My job is to convert 100K into a million. It's as simple as that. My job is to teach you how to convert every 100K into a million, or in the case of those of you who have less money, 10K into 100K. That's my job, it's as simple as that. The only the only thing, uh, by the way, my job's made easier, A, by the market, and B, by tax-free allowances, et cetera. This is pre-tax, I don't know what your personal tax rate is. Uh, you know, if you're in a country paying 90% tax, then <laughs> I'm sorry, you're screwed, okay? So our key point is how the hell do we do that one, Mr. Patel? How do we get that closer to that? And by the way, if you wanna see the figures, there they are. 
you making some contributions, that's in green, and the market return is a million, so 100 to a million over 10 years. Maybe you think that's over optimistic for you because it's too short a time frame, or it's too much money you've started off with. So let's go, let's go by something you might want to start your children with. Or if you're in your 20s and 30s and a total beginner, you're not the multimillionaire with a big pension pot. Let's say you start with just 10K. Okay, so my job for my son, who's got a junior ISA, and there's caps on how much he can have, is to start with 10K, which we did when he was born, uh, and uh, add uh, the equivalent of the, the annual allowance, all right? So let's say roughly 6,000 a year, 500 pounds a month. Then this is what your return looks like. This is actually what I do for my family members. So I do it for my um, sister, my, um, my, my nephew's nieces. Uh, I tell them how to do this, okay? Because they're young, they're, they're all under the age of 10, okay? Summer two, summer five, et cetera, right? Uh, this is what it looks like. They turn it over 15 years. By the time they get to university, they turn 10,000 into 600,000. 10,000 into over half a million. 10,000 into over half a million by the time they go to university. Now, that's, that's just on 20%. The reason I target 40% is because if I get it wrong and I only do 20%, okay, uh, then then it, it um, kid, I'll answer that question in a second. Uh, uh, then at least we're still over, uh, we're overachieving, right? That's why I set a high bar for stocks before they can get into my portfolio. Set a high bar. I do not spray and pray and, and, and buy every single bloody stock that I ever hear of in the hope some of them will go up because it would mean dividing myself too thinly. And if one or two of them are that good, then I'll have put too little money on them. You do not spray and pray. So let me tell you the magic numbers that you're gonna do. Now we've done experiments on private investors and we've discovered that if you keep it simple, they do it. If you complicate it, they don't. Now you might say to me, bloody Alpesh, you are an idiot. Uh, I could have told you that Alpesh, you didn't need to do an experiment to work out if you keep it simple, private investors will follow it. Well, we wanted to be absolutely sure. So let me simplify it for you. And it's these numbers and write them down. 12, 15, 25, 40. These are the most important numbers for me uh, for making money and for private investors and for my sister and for my brothers and for my nephews and nieces because they don't have the interest or the time or the energy or the inclination to read my books and i don't want them to okay i wish they did but they won't they won't do it they won't read them in the other languages the rest of the world does but my family won't so i have to keep it simple for them 12 is 12 months they're going to hold 15 stocks, that's where the 15 comes in, for 12 months. I'll tell you how we find them in a second. And if, uh, uh, if at any point since they bought them, any of them goes down 25% from the highest they've been, so let's say it goes up 100% and then drops down to 75%, they will sell it. Now, you can tweak those rules if you wish. I'm not going to go into every single variety because I'm keeping it simple. And they're going to target 40% per annum. Well, how are they going to target 40% per annum? They're going to filter, filter, filter in the ways I'm going to show you to get those 15 stocks. Alpesh, why not 20 stocks? Why not 50? I'll show you why through research, 15 for private investors is best. Why 12 months? Why not one month? Why are they not just re recycling them each day? They don't have the time. Well, why don't they hold them for 50 years? Seriously, the world changes too quickly to hold things for 50. Well, why is it 12 months, Alpesh, not 13? Why not 11 months and one day? because we're keeping it simple, all right? And not only that, they are not gonna give it to fund managers. I will shoot them if they give it to fund managers, right? Proverbially, uh, uh, because fund managers underperform. Why do they underperform? Well, trust me, I went to university with a lot of people who become fund managers, and they're not the brightest cookies in the cookie jar. Long only fund managers, I'm not like hedge fund managers, they're different, uh, uh, we're the elite. Um, but the long only fund managers are really not that bright. I know a lot of them. I've never met a clever one yet, not yet, okay? But that doesn't matter because the Financial Times tell you this. This is from one of the FT articles. They're really rubbish at what they do, okay? There is research to show that persistence in performance amongst long-only fund managers does not exist. Persistence in underperformance does exist. Let me say that again. Persistence in uh, outperformance amongst long-only fund managers doesn't exist, doesn't exist. Underperformance and persistence of underperformance does exist. So they keep underperforming and the ones who are good um, usually have done it just out of chance or luck and then they drop back. So I want you to be your own fund manager. I want you to be your own fund manager, right? Because you won't be tied by the shackles. The reason they underperform is this. Not only are they a bit dim, okay? But the reason they underperform is they won't look at all the factors. 
that I've just told you to look at, valuation, growth, income, cash flow, volatility. Why? Because their boss has told them, hey, mate, we've got a market uh, 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 and advertise our company to get as much money as possible. The best way to do that is to have 10 different products. Japan Growth Fund, UK Income Fund, Europe Value Fund. Okay, by having lots of different funds, we can take in more capital, do more marketing, and earn more money. But by doing, by having those funds which are handcuffed to a particular geography and a particular style, guess what? That means, unlike you, they can't pick from the best companies in the world. They can only pick in a geography and a particular style. Well, no wonder they're rubbish, they're handcuffed. Okay, so you're not gonna do that. And please don't tell me, oh, Jojo got 40% got last year. Yeah, I'm talking about consistency. Most of these fund managers, bloody hell, they were in kindergarten when I wrote that column in the FT saying, invest in the US, uh, uh, and these are the companies that I'm gonna do. And that was in 1999, if you're thinking, well, yeah, it was obvious how it's every business in that. Or if you're thinking, well, how did that work out for you? Arbitrage? Well, bloody look at the market since 1999. The FTSE is still at a level it is today. And still they're selling you UK funds? Are you kidding me? I want, and if you're like me, you're British, I want you to own global companies. And I'm going to show you why. This is the poverty gap over the last five years you're facing. If you've been investing in British fund managers or in British stocks, you have got minus 12% return. If you've been looking at global companies, you've got, if you just even tracked an index, just tracked an index, just tracked a bloody index, which is pretty pathetic, but if just tracked an index, you've got 128% return over five years. There's a big difference. That's your poverty gap. That's your pension. That's going to be, okay, that's going to be the difference between rich and poor for you. All right, so focus. IH, focus on what I'm saying, which is about you, not about the rest of the world. Focus on what I'm saying, okay? You're easily distracted, ADD. This is a typical bad portfolio. This is what it looks like. This is what one of my students sent me. Why is it a bad portfolio? Because it is focused on name recognition. It hasn't been filtered based on valuation or cash flow, which is what Crokey does, or Sortina, which is volatility and average returns, uh, uh, or valuation, because the, the ratings are just low on everything. And guess what happens at the end of it? Typical bad portfolio. Now, let me know, how many of these companies do you guys own? How many of these are, look at that, that's what he produced. Uh, uh, and he was happy with it because he said, no, but you know, I've heard of Barrett and BP and BT and, and 15 years ago, one of those companies did really well for a month. So name recognition and some historic performance for a low period of time, uh, a long time ago is what most people pick their stocks on. And I said, how did you come by these names? He said, oh, I read an article about Aviva. Um, somebody had mentioned it on the internet or uh, yeah, uh, 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 Lloyd's, I just thought, you know, banks were really beaten down, so I'll go into it and all of this. And I said, look, you know, it's reasonable what you're doing. A lot of people do that, okay? A lot of people do that, uh, I said. But look at your performance. You're down 30, 40%, whilst the rest of the world is up, well, the rest of the world outside the UK is up so much. I want British people to be richer, and the way I want them to be richer is follow what I'm about to tell you, right? And the other reason I don't like fund managers, and, and, and I just explained this to my sister as well, is this. I said, let's, let's have a look at one of your funds. Okay, this was one of my students, actually, and I showed her uh, a fund that he'd had, and he'd had the UK Listed Equity Growth Fund, right? Equity Growth Fund, sounds sexy, doesn't it? UK Equity Growth Fund, all right? And what happened? Three, over three years, down 2.3%. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out to you, and some of you will say, no, but Alpish, look, he's got eight out of 10 and lots of diamonds and the letter A. So he must be good. Marketing gimmicks. They are marketing gimmicks in the fund management industry, right? The fund management industry will give you these marketing gimmicks. They will put diamonds, they'll put letters, and they'll put numbers, right? And then they'll give you minus 3%. And, you, and then you'll go, well, that's okay, Alpish. It's been a really tough time for the markets. Fine, if you want to make excuses and make fund managers rich, feel free, just give them a charitable donation instead. Yeah, you can see I'm really pissed off at my industry, and I have been if you follow me for 20 years. Uh, problem is, you're also paying 10% to be kicked in the teeth. If you invest 10,000 pounds with a typical fund, right, after five years, which is their recommended holding period, you'll have paid in total cost 1,000 pounds. Those aren't my figures. Those are the figures from the fund itself. By law, it's required to tell you this. In the small print on page 60 of its fund document, it's required to tell you this, and that's what you pay. If you want to go ahead and do it, feel free. And I've got people who say to me, oh, I'm just going to let them have it. And I'll say, hey, thanks. Whilst you're just throwing away money, do you mind just wiring some free money into my account as well because you're stupid enough to do it? So that's what I tell them. And sometimes they feel a bit offended, but, you know, who cares?
That's who I am, okay? Um, well, my job is I'm going to share with you the insights, not just from these, because I don't care what they say. What I want to see is because these guys and these guys can become self-fulfilling prophecies. So I filter down and see what they're saying. And if the names keep appearing time and time again, and they appear on valuation, and they appear on growth, and on income, and on cash flow, because I don't trust these guys, okay? And they appear on their lists, and they appear in the big hedge funds, and they appear on big purchases by insiders recently, and they appear on a multitude of filtered things, then it will get into my squad of top 15. I'm sort of like Liverpool Football Club or Manchester United. I only want the best of the best of the best, or Leeds United, obviously, uh, in my football team. Okay, it's as simple as that. Why? Because in my freaking future, and whilst I believe in reincarnation, I don't want to wait till the next life to make money, right? My job's to do it now, uh, especially now that I'm a dad, right? It's my job, take all of this. So I'm going to share that with you. Now, you don't get this, and I think that's unfair. That's why I always share this research and data for free with people, because I don't think it's fair that the rich keep getting richer through private information they've got, and they don't share it with you. If it was down to me, I would nationalize Goldman Sachs and give their information publicly, or UBS and everybody else. Uh, and you might think, nah, they're rubbish. Well, they control trillions and so do UBS and Rothschilds and everybody else, okay? So I'm gonna share that information with you. Now, big problem you might think you have is when to sell. You don't, I've told you already. We're gonna hold for 12 months, uh, uh, and then reevaluate. You might still buy the same stocks after 12 months again when you reevaluate based on the same criteria I'm gonna give you, or equally, if it drops 25% from the highest it's been since you bought it. Now, why do you do that, Arpish? Well, because if a stock goes up 200% and then drops, but I don't want it to go back to zero by the end of the year. So at least it lets me capture some of the problems. Oh, Arpish, why don't you double up? Or blah, 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 blah. No, I'm keeping it simple for you. You can tweak the rules. You can use your common sense if you wish to tweak those rules, but I'm trying to keep it simple for you. 12, 25, remember 40 is what we're going for and 15 stocks is what we're gonna pick. So how are we gonna pick them? Right, I have eight strategies. I'm gonna put six on there because PowerPoint limitations. Anyway, uh, let me go through them. Strategy number one, just because it's in one of my strategies does not mean it gets into my squad of 15 stocks. What it has on Y15, I'll show you the portfolio of some of the richest people in the world in just a second, right? Why, why have I picked these guru buys? Investment strategy number one, I need a stock to be in as many of my strategies as possible before it will get in my squad. Let me say that again. It has got to be in as many as possible to get into my squad. Why? Because I filter, filter, filter. Remember what I said on the research at the start, just because it fits into valuation, just because it fits into growth, that isn't enough. That will give us 30% or 25%, but we want the ones which are getting uh, not just averaging 30%, but amongst those are doing even better than that, okay? So that's how we filter, filter, filter. So guru buys, feel free to take a picture. I will look at hedge fund ownership, not because all hedge funds are good, okay? Not because they always consistently outperform, but because if something has trillions of dollars behind it, there is research to show, the research I mentioned earlier, that there is an increased likelihood it is going to perform well than if it's got no money behind it at all and nobody likes it and they keep selling it. Okay, if somebody keeps selling trillions of dollars of a stock, the chances are it's not going to go up. All right, oh, that seems to make sense, Harpesh. Could you do state the obvious? Yes. So I look at this and I share this information with you. That doesn't mean I'm going to buy these. Whatever you do, do not just blindly buy it. That's just one strategy to filter, filter, filter. Why? Because I like wearing belts and braces. In fact, I like wearing six belts and six braces. Okay, what else do I look at? Well, I don't just look at those, I'll look at individual hedge funds which have been performing really well. So I don't just look at the collective, the average, right? I also wanna look at the outliers. Always look at averages and outliers, averages and outliers. Why? Because well, outliers isn't enough information and average isn't enough, look at both. So how do I look at the uh, outliers? Well, John Kim, for instance, has for the last three years been averaging over 50%, so he beats my criteria of over 40. Why don't you just look at him, Arpesh? Well, that'd be a bit bloody risky, wouldn't it? He might blow his head up tomorrow, for all I know, okay? But I'm gonna see which names keep reappearing in my strategy, which ones keep reappearing. Okay, I do own Visa and MasterCard, by the way. I also own Square, which has done better than all. It's not in his list, <gasps> but it's not in his list, so why do you do it? Why do you do it then, Alpesh? Well, because it's in the other list. So let's look at some of the other stuff. Why did I say 15 stocks? The reason I said 15, sorry, that's a bit difficult to see. Let me just describe before I zoom in. These are some billionaires 
that you might have heard of. Bill Gates, Jim Simons, Leon Cooperman, Warren Buffett, uh, Bill Ackman, uh, Carl Icahn. Okay, these are their top 10 holdings and the number of stocks they hold, right? Uh, most of them hold between 10 and 40 stocks, right? And their top 10 holdings are pretty much where half their capital is. By the time you get to their 10th uh, holding, they've got 0.8% of their money in it. In other words, really, most of their money is in their top 10 holdings. Do you see why I've limited you to 15 stocks? Now, you can argue with me that you shouldn't have 15. You should have 20, 40. How's that diversifying? Blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I've got these billionaires on my side. Who are you bringing on your side? Right? So... That doesn't mean that I'm just going to buy Apple because Mr. Buffett has it, because he might have bought it 50 years ago and is happily living off the dividends. For all I am, I can't have bought it 50 years ago, but you know what I mean, okay? But what I'm saying is 15 stocks comes from partly the evidence on this, but there's other evidence I'm going to show you a little bit later on as well. There's a lot of research which has been done that for most private investors, okay? It should be this. And by the way, my team will give me a drill down on what their individual holdings are, when do they change, when do they add to them, what's the impact? The reason I'm telling you is this, not because I expect you to do all this, but because I need you to know that in the filtration process, what goes on, and if you're not doing it, you're gonna mess up, okay? So, my job when I tell you, starting, you follow me on the internet, or whatever, and I say to you, I like a particular company, it is not because I pulled it out of my backside, it is because we filtered according to strategy one, guru ownership. So, if you wanna know which names we happen to have particularly filtered down on, it was these. This is the S&P 500 filtered according to the ones by darker the green, the more of those gurus' names that kept coming up in the hedge funds and in the long only like the, the ones I've mentioned, Bill Gates and so on. So there was a lot of money backing them up, okay? Um, the darkest one, which I own, United Healthcare, right? That's in there. Then there was Amazon. That doesn't mean I just bought it because of this. This is not my list. It's not my final list because the stocks still have to meet investment strategy too. There are a few select companies I will leverage big on. By leverage big, I mean two times leverage. So if they go up $1, I make $2. If they go down $1, I lose $2. Risky, risky. So don't do it if you don't like risk. And those ones that I have double leverage on and triple leverage are S&P 500. Okay, I have three times leverage on. Um, Amazon, I happen to have two times. Microsoft, I have two times. I have no problems holding those still. Okay. That's the leverage. If you fancy taking a picture, then that's fine. So that's investment strategy number one. It's the job of my team to give me strategy one, which names keep coming up and it keeps changing and they give it to me. Strategy two was leveraging on the quality ones. The quality ones, well, I'm showing you which ones I've got current leverage on. And it's only two to one other than the S&P where I've got three to one leverage. Okay. And I've got no problems holding it into next year. We can argue the toss on macroeconomics if you wish on that. Investment strategy three, I do look for where is the trillions of fund management money going in. But Albert, so you said you hate fund managers. I do. But the buggers have got control over trillions of dollars. So guess what? If you can't beat them, sometimes you end up joining. So you look at things like the qual. ETF, there's others, and you notice that it keeps bloody going up. What are they looking at? Well, these are all the top 10 holdings. Take a picture, get that camera ready. I had somebody whinging once. Oh, you didn't, you went through the slides too quickly, you get, right? So don't whinge. Take a photo, please, my friends. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean I buy them. That's just another filtration. I own Nike, I own Merck, I own Visa, MasterCard, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft. Not because it's on this list, but because it also came on my other list. And then I'll look to see which of those have got the highest contribution, right? What I'm saying is filter, filter, filter. How are we going to do it? Let me explain. Probably the most important is this one for me. What are the banks telling their richest clients? This is not because I think banks are godlike. It is because they control trillions of dollars and some of the banks do do tend to get things a little bit right. An example was, if you were in my webinar in April, you know, I told you about Citigroup, itself a bank. And I said, this red line is what the average analyst forecast was. By analyst forecast, I don't mean bloody Motley Fool or I don't mean um, Shares Magazine or Investors Fricking Chronicle. I don't mean a journalist or a broker at Hargreaves bloody Lansdowne. I mean, a proper analyst, yeah? Somebody at Rothschilds or UBS. Um, not because they're good, but because they can move the bloody markets, okay? 
And I said, uh, back in April, this could go from 42 to 70. Why? Because 78 was the average they were forecasting, and analysts tend to be over-optimistic, as I've written in my books and my FT column and research shows. Today, it's $60, so it's a 50% return. Similarly, but that wasn't the only reason. It's because it also turned up in the other strategies as well, because we filtered for valuation, growth, income, momentum, cash flow, uh, uh, average return, and uh, variation from that. In other words, Sortino and Alpha. If you really want to know what the numbers are, valuation, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, Alpha. Valuation, growth, income, uh, sorry, valuation, growth, income, momentum, cash flow, Sortino, Alpha. And I'll go into that in a second. It's coming up. So hold your horses. In April, I said Capri would go from $12 to 30 because that was the average analyst price target, but also because the valuation was there, the growth was there, the income was there, the momentum was there, the cash flow was there, the Sortino and the Alpha were there. Okay, that's a 250% return because today it's at about $42, right? March, this one, Disney. I picked this for my sister because she said, I need a stock for my nephew, my nephews, her children, uh, uh, school fees. So something not too risky. And I thought, right, shit, okay. And she's my sister, so she's gonna shoot me if I get it wrong. Uh, and I said, right, Disney, $99, 144, not just because of the analysts, had the ratings, that isn't enough. Shares Magazine isn't enough. Investors Chronicle isn't enough. God forbid, Sunday Times tip shares isn't enough. It's gotta be what are the banks actually saying and valuation, growth, income, cash flow, Sortina Alpha. I'll come to that in a second. Shan, I will repeat it, don't worry. I'll repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Don't, don't worry. I know I'm talking quick, but I will repeat it and I will make sure I stay here all day if I have to in repeating it. So I will repeat the strategy again. Today, $173, so that's a 73% return. But it couldn't just be, and please listen to me, because the mistake you guys are making is you're going onto internet websites and you're going onto uh, those and they're only picking one or two filters because they've got journalistic comment to fill. They've got pages to fill. We can't just afford to look at one thing. In March, regarding Uber, I said 27 to 43. Today, it's at 50. That's an 85% return. Why did I say 43? Because of that number there and also valuation, growth, income, cash flow, et cetera, et cetera. I won't keep boring you with this. Viacom was another one from March. Oh, by the way, how do you know I did it in March? Well, there's the bloody screenshot from the March webinar. I can't believe how quick this year has gone. Honestly, it feels like yesterday I did that. In March, I said I can go from $12 to 37 Today, it's at 37 it's 190% return. It hit it. Doesn't always happen. Do you know when it doesn't happen? When it hasn't got the valuation factors I mentioned earlier, the growth, the income, the momentum. Now, don't take my word for it. Use your own common sense beyond the research that I've already backed up my views and arguments with, which is surely companies which have got lower valuations and the research backs it up are better than the ones which have. Surely if we filter, 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 so we take a pool of companies which are likely to do 30% per annum because they're in the lowest price to book ratio, and then out of those, we filter again to see which one of those tend to do even better. Oh, the ones with the low price to book and the high cash flow growth are more likely to get to a 40%. Do you see what I'm doing? And if you think about it afterwards, you go, that's obvious, Alpesh. You're not doing anything special. Well, you know what? The best and simplest things should be where you turn around and the guy who's explained it, you go, yeah, that's obvious. Oh, you're not special. That's just too easy and obvious. Like this. Oh, God, it's so obvious that you'd make a cell phone which can do so many clever things. Oh, it's obvious. Why didn't somebody else? Go, eh, eh. Right? That's the whole point. When I finish with you on this, you should be able to turn around and go, yeah, everything you said is obvious, Alpes. You're not special. And I'll be happy if you do that. Right, United Healthcare, I already talked about March, I said from 242 to 323, that's 41%. By the way, if it gets my 40% target that I want, I don't sell it. I told you, I only sell if it 12 months are up or it drops 25% from the highest it's been. Why don't you sell it if you get your 41%? The reason is this, the reason I have 15 stocks and not just one is this. Some of them might go up 200%, even though I've used them with the same criteria, and some might just go up 10%. Okay, I don't know which ones of that 15 are going to overshoot and which ones are going to be underperforming. And, you know, just like a football team, I don't know which players are going to turn out to be really surprised, brilliant, and which ones are going to be, oh, I thought I expected better, but they didn't do it. Just like an employment team in your firms uh, or your colleagues at work, you know? Um, and therefore, that's why I have 15. I can't rely on just one. That'd be too risky. Uh, but also, because I don't know which one's going to overshoot, I don't want to cap my profits. So I don't cap my profits. So I let them run until 
and if they drop 25% from the highest they've been since I bought them in that 12 month period. And then at the end of 12 months, we go through the whole cycle again, not just with those stocks, but with the whole universe of 9,000 stocks as well. And when I say what are banks telling their clients, this is the level of detail my team has to provide me. It is this level of detail. I need to know, is it a big ass fund? Not freaking Motley Fool or Shares Magazine, I'm afraid. Not, uh, uh, and by the way, Stevens, I don't care. Rosenblatt, I don't care. Barclays, uh, the ones which can be self fulfilling. Nomura, Wells Fargo, Credit Suisse, Conaccord, Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank, Goldman's, okay? And I need to know, is that guy, Jason Kuppenferg, what's his buy? How high a target is he saying? When was it said, right? How recently? In other words, we're looking for impact, just like... Any algorithm, you're looking for impact. Impact depends on the size of the firm, the track record of the individual, the size of the price target, and the frequency or the recency, recency in which he said it. Shit, that looks complicated, Arpesh. And if you think you're going to give your money to a fund manager and they're going to do it for you, you're wrong. They're not. For a variety of reasons, they're not. Okay, so do not think, oh, Arpesh, the logical conclusion is I'll just give it to somebody else to do. I'm afraid you're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to have to do it yourself, and I'm going to continue showing you how to do it. So don't worry. I'm going to simplify it. Strategy two, part of number four, most important, what do big banks tell the clients? Now, if you said to me, Alpish, forget everything. Just tell me one thing to focus on, just one. Okay, I'm going to tell you, and it's this. This is from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. The chairperson at the moment of Goldman Sachs Asset Management is uh, Mrs. Patel. Mrs. Patel is chairwoman of Goldman Sachs Asset Management. She's probably the most powerful woman in finance. Anyway, her firm, Goldman Sachs Asset Management, use this formula. Why do they use this formula to tell their wealthiest, richest clients, the richest people in the world, which stocks to put their money in? Why do they use this? Because their research, their geeks found that this formula called Crokey, which is basically cash flow, cash flow, over capital in a company. Cash flow is just how much cash it generates. It's not profits, it's not sales, surprisingly, okay? It's cash, right? Why is cash important? Look out your window at what's happening during COVID. Anyway, this is pre-COVID. So they did research since 1999 uh, and beyond, actually. And they worked out companies with the highest cash flows generated 30% per annum returns. 30% per annum returns. So if you said to me, just give me one thing, this formula was invented by Deutsche Bank and is used by Goldman Sachs. If you don't believe me, there's the flipping slide, okay? There's the slide. So not, I'm not taking any credit for any of this. I didn't invent it. I didn't do this research. I don't have the resources and the manpower uh, uh, to do this kind of research. I didn't even have the imagination to do this research. I don't need the imagination. I just need to get the bank balance off the benefit of riding on somebody else's back, as every employer, every shareholder in the world does. I am a fat cat capitalist. I profit from the labors of others and hopefully share that, that knowledge to redeem my soul with you guys. Okay, Goldman Sachs, this is what it is. So if you told me any one, it'd be this. But don't just use this. As I told you, you've got to filter, not just cash flow. It needs to be undervalued to do even better. And it needs to have high growth in terms of sales and earnings and dividend deals, and that'll be even better. Okay, so my team gets me those numbers, right? Why did I say 15 stocks? I'll tell you again. Risk to your portfolio, the volatility of your portfolio versus the number of stocks. Once you get to about 15, for most people, even if they're all technology stocks, I've got news for you. For those of you who think, oh, I better have some real estate to diversify, you're wrong. When the markets fall, everything is correlated. If you don't believe me, real estate and Microsoft are highly correlated when the markets fall. Microsoft and Amazon on a day-to-day -day basis are not highly correlated, even though they're both in the technology sector. So everything you've been taught by dimwit journalists saying, eh, hey, diversify by having different sectors, they're idiots. They haven't read the recent, most recent research, which I've published in the FT, which is, Downside, there's high correlation, and a day-to-day -day basis, intrasector, there isn't even high correlation anyway. So there you go, okay? And especially in an increasingly connected world, <coughs> all of that old stuff, which might have worked in the 60s and 70s when the journalist was learning his trade, doesn't work now. Investing strategy five, cash flow is king. I've already told you cash flow is king. For instance, in March, I said, uh, Alamask, which I didn't even know, but I said, look, here's one to give you an example, and did it in March and got into it 63 to £1.61 today. And if you're in my March webinar, you'll know. Today, it's £1.10. That's an 85% return. Guess what? Um, it's not gone up to £1.61. Has it got more room? Might do, but 
I've got it's got 12 months. It's got until March to run or if it drops 25 percent. So that's how I know to get out. I don't get out just because of that figure. OK, undervaluation based on uh, what's called discount cash flow. It's something we use in the private, I have a private equity fund and uh, well, several and discount cash flow is a methodology we use. If you saw me on um, talking about Facebook when it first IPO'd on Newsnight, uh, with Emily Makeless, I explained on a discount cash flow basis when it IPO'd, it was overvalued and it'll drop 50%. It dropped 50% within a month of my broadcast and it's on my YouTube channel. You can see it as well. Okay. Like I said, I know what works. Uh, investment strategy six, coattails are smart, big money. What do I mean by this? Like I already said, I need the stocks to also, so it's the job of my team also to be within uh, a lot of funds and those funds buying them. Why? Because either it's self-fulfilling or if it's also valuation, growth, income, momentum, I'm laughing because I filtered, filtered, filtered. Which are the funds? So AbbVie I own, just so you know, I own. Uh, which are the hedge funds we look at? Well, there's a whole list. Take a picture. It's not really important or relevant, so I'm not going to leave it on screen too long, but you should have your cameras ready if you're that interested. Uh, you can take a picture uh, and we distill that down. But just because they've got it doesn't mean about it. It's got to still meet valuation, growth, income, momentum, cash flow, Sortino and Alpha. Sortino is the app. Well, I'll explain it in a second what Sortino is. We also, and this is probably, if somebody said, what's your most favorite strategy? Funnily enough, it's probably this. Now, please don't, don't misread that and think, oh, everything else he said is rubbish. It's just that I particularly like this. Uh, and it's one, well, I just particularly like it. And, and it's this. What I do is I do two times leverage uh, and hold for 12 months stocks which have this kind of statistical distribution, okay, which over a 250 period on average have a very high probability of a good average return and have a relatively narrow and positive range. What? I'll name you some stocks in a moment because you're not going to do this. I'll tell you what they are in a second. Now, let me explain what the hell that chart is. Let's look at it on a one-day basis. On a one-day basis, this stock generates on a, most of the time, on any one day, it's going to give you a 0% return, obviously. Okay, some days it might pop up or pop down. Very rare. Hardly ever happens. That's what that graph is. If you remember your math from school, that's what it is. Over a five-day period, could be as low as minus 16%, up 19%, but typically it's up only 1% over five days. Now you might say, oh, why don't you just buy it for five days and sell it? Well, because <laughs> minus 16% is what it could do, and I'll have to wait a lot of, it's a lot of, well, 16 times five days in order to make that, so no, I don't do that, all right? 20 days, Alpesh, look, you'll get a 0% return. Woohoo, thank you very much. Yeah, obviously not interested. That's why I look at the 20, 250 day. Why do I leverage two times? Well, because I should get a 90% return, two times 46, or maybe I get lucky and I get 160% return. I don't rely on luck. Worst case, I'll get a 26% return. I don't mind that. Okay, there's very few companies which have this kind of distribution. Alpesh, why can't you just tell us which stocks are guaranteed to give you a 46% return and guaranteed don't have a distribution of volatility around that at all, don't have any risk of ever missing that, okay? Oh, Raj, yes, I didn't go through all of them. Seven, I, just out of time, I didn't go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so I've jumped from six to eight, um, uh, just out of the interest of time. Okay, um, so uh, uh, on this, what, what, I wish the company existed, which all it did every single year is generate a 50% return in its share price. I wish that company existed. It doesn't. It doesn't. Sadly, unless one of you is going to create that company, it doesn't exist in the world. There's 9,000 companies uh, from around the world which are listed on the New York Stock Exchange uh, and the London Stock Exchange. I'm talking Chinese companies listed in London and New York. I'm talking about Indian companies. I'm talking about Singaporean companies. I'm talking about Australian companies listed in London, New York. There's 9,000. Not one of them every year generates 50% per annum on average with a very narrow distribution. That's just the world, okay? That's just the world, all right? So which ones ha are the closest to this? Um, at the moment, Dollar General is like this. Costco is like this. Microsoft is like this. I wish there were more. There aren't. I don't mind risking, and they're a bit riskier than this, Amazon and Apple into this. So I do two times leverage on those, okay? That's because I'm willing to take higher risk. You shouldn't take higher risk. You should not do this in your pension. I can, because my personal circumstances are different to yours. I don't know yours, so I can't advise you on yours. But what I can say for me, my son, my, um, I don't even do this for my family members. I don't want <laughs> uh, uh, because, you know, they're family members. I love them. Uh, but for me, no issues. So, and by the way, when I say I'm targeting 40%, that doesn't include leverage. Okay. That's excluding the leverage stuff. That's just the pure stocks. 
Okay, when it's leverage, obviously I expect 80% on those. Why don't I only do leverage? Well, what if I get a bad year? I don't want to be down. Um, uh, uh, well, I'd be down 40% potentially. I don't want that. Okay, so this is mixed in. Uh, the way we do it, really simple, and this is how I want you to do it. How I want you to do it. Valuation, growth, income, momentum, cash flow, performance, average return, outperformance of market, right? It's going to be those factors. Now, that's going to be critical. I've mentioned some stocks to you. If you do not find a process which does that, I'm afraid you are going to be throwing darts at a dartboard. You're going to be listening to journalists. You're going to be doing things ad hoc. I want to make sure, okay, you look at global stocks, preferably US, as I've explained to you, as well as UK. You can put them in your SIP. You will get tax-free gains from those being in your SIP. Don't give it to a fund manager. You don't need to. The fund manager will mess it up. They can't do this. If you think fund managers are doing this, you are wrong because they're marketing and advertising and they can only put it in a few companies, okay? The important numbers, 12, 15, 25, 40, okay? You can monitor it once a month if you wish. If it's dropped 25% from the highest it's been, you can get out, right? Well, I'll be sure they're gonna monitor it every single day. No, relax, okay? One screen is all you need, not one strategy. Remember, you want the names to appear in as many as possible. Try and have 15 to 20 stocks, okay? Now, I will also, at the end of the webinar, as I promised, tell you how you can download that research report if you really want to know all the academic underpinnings of everything that I've said and a free copy of my book, Investing on Plug, if you want to read it. I don't recommend you read it because you've been on this webinar. If you are not doing it this way, I'm afraid it is not going to be successful for you in investing. You will get lucky. You will have one or two. But after 12 months, you will either hold on too long or in your losing ones, you won't have let go of them. All right? Don't do that. Right, use these numbers, 12, 15, 25, 40. Why only 15? I just showed you Warren Buffett's bloody portfolio. Now, people said to me, when I was at university, this is when I perfected this, I was trading and investing at university. Investing is 12-month holdings, trading is um, day-to-day. Ignore the trading part on this webinar. Investing, this is when I did it. This is when I met those people, and it's when I first started writing my first book. Why did I write the book? Because it's the best way to meet the best investors in the world. Because I wasn't at university. Do I look like it in there? I look like a freaking geek. Okay, that's how I got to this when I first started writing those. Uh, the uh, winning competitions in the FT, they then offered me a column, and I said, yeah, I want to raise my profile. Uh, why not? Vanity, ego. Uh, and I wrote the books, okay, as well. Now, I can tell you, uh, you might think, you were arrogant so-and-so. Let me tell you the hu- the humility part of it. Okay, I was born with that silver spoon in Armley. The only way I knew to move up the social ladder, and my family didn't, didn't have money, they didn't know anybody investing, is to learn from the best in the world. That's what I did. It took me 10 years after winning that competition in the FT to launch my own hedge fund. Uh, our clients are sovereign wealth funds and pension funds, AXA, Aegon, high net worth individuals like the founder of New Look, the founder of Cobra Bit. It is not... It is not retail clients because uh, uh, you don't have enough money, uh, basically, to make it worth uh, a hedge fund. Well, well, the law prevents it. If you want to learn what I've taught you as well, you can. I will give you the information on how to download that research report in the book for free. Okay. But people then kept asking me, they said, we want to learn this more. We want you to overlook what we're doing. So to make sure, thank you, Mahendra, um, uh, uh, to make sure that we understand what you're saying. Okay, and we don't want to travel to hotels, particularly now with COVID. We don't want somebody who's connected to a broker because they're just trying to flog us that. We don't want somebody who's connected to a fund because they're trying to flog us a fund. I'm not, I don't have a long only fund. Uh, I don't have any retail funds. I'm not trying to sell you funds. I don't have a brokerage. So I'm not trying to sell you a brokerage. I'm completely independent of any of that. I have no conflict of interest with you. And they said, what lifetime updates? And I said, you know what? It's not worth my while. And then I thought, hang on, writing books is not going to get the mission across globally. I have a global mission to teach people to make the most of their money in their pensions. I've got millionaires I'm teaching, and I'm thinking, and they're sacking their financial advisors because the guys don't know what the hell they're doing. And then they're going, oh, God, I just made tens of thousands thanks to you. And so it's sort of better. I said, yeah, well, if you get the right education, you can. And I thought, well, you know what? To get this mission globally, we've got to give them something software so they get the data at hand we've got to give them um uh, 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 all of this education without them and direct access to me but no subscription costs no daily costs weekly or monthly costs because it's their return then i'd just be another fund manager charging them bloody fees every day so i said to my team i said i'll do it if 
And it wasn't my idea, it was one of theirs. Uh, I'll do it if I'm not charging them any fees whatsoever every day, every week, every month. So if you actually, if you like what you've read and listened and you learned it and you want to apply it, please go ahead. I've taught you everything I know. Valuation, growth, income, momentum, cash flow. Filter, filter, filter. 15 stocks, 25 uh, percent, remember, 40% target, 12 months. That is everything I know. If you want me to teach you and overlook it for you instead every year, okay, Odlianke, yes, indeed, my friend, um, then I'll show you how you can in one second, right? And we had no competition providing this. There is absolutely nobody with these credentials anywhere providing this because everybody else wants to charge you a fee. Uh, every single day, week, month, or whatever, or they want to say, oh, no, give it to us. Put it on our app. There's these apps now on the internet. And you know what those apps are doing? They're shoving you into funds, and then they're charging you fees every day, every week, and they're getting fat off you. Do not give it to the apps and the funds. And they go, high risk, low risk, medium risk, index trackers. Well, that's fine if you want to make sure you don't um, completely go bankrupt, but if you actually want to make a decent return, you're going to have to do it yourself. You want me to teach you how to do it one-to-one, then I, I will teach people in groups of 10. I teach people in groups of 10. I show them the free software. I give them the free education in groups of 10, one-to-one, Zoom calls and materials on the internet with videos and articles from me, but one-to-one Zoom calls with me. If you want me to overlook and look at your portfolio, uh, or if you want to build one and you want to know the education, education is what it is on how to get from me, I will do that because we're going to do this worldwide. We're going to disrupt the fund management industry. Our mission is to disrupt and destroy the fund management industry so that you get empowered to do it. That's why I'm on the air. I'm always talking about it, and I've talked about it time and time again. And thanks to the amazing reviews from uh, American Express, Merrill Lynch, uh, BBC, uh, Financial Times, Coots, okay, uh, uh, we know we're onto something amazing. One to one Telegram, instant messages, uh, course material, and one to one Zooms with me as well. If you want me to look over and educate you over your portfolio and help you build your portfolio, I will take on 10 people on a webinar at a time. Okay, we're going to take this global. We think this can be a billion dollar company uh, which can be floated on the stock market uh, because we think there's going to be a massive demand for this. How do I know there's a massive demand? Because there's a huge bloody demand for investment knowledge in book format, and book format is out of date. Videos and one-to-one is what modern technology dictates how you get people on top of this. So if you want to know how to value growth, income, cash flow, I've taught you. If you want me to teach you from what I've said to you uh, through Skype and through course material, if you want to look through so you make sure you understand it, my portfolio, if you want access to my webinars just for you, and when I like things and which stocks I narrow down because you don't want to do it yourself. And I've taught you how to do it yourself. Valuation, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, alpha, okay? Uh, but you want me to do it for you and look over that portfolio and have access to my 9,000 stocks filtered down to the top 200 and then the 15, which are in my portfolio, and teach you how to do it yourself and go through your SIP and ISA so I can see if your education, you're applying properly, then I'll do it, okay? And it's the first 10. And you can join with me on LinkedIn where you can connect with me and my networks. Because when I teach people, I mentor them for life and everything. So I've got people who do it for their children. And they say, I want you to mentor my ch child to get into asset management, or I want you to teach my child how to do it. And that's it, I'm their mentor for life. I co-founded the UK's largest entrepreneur mentoring organization called TIE, T-I-E. T -I -E. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually part of the world's largest entrepreneur mentoring organization. So I know about mentoring, okay? Uh, and so if you want me, and we got some great reviews from students who've signed up in the past, all right? This is what I'll do in the first seven days. You're going to get in seven days, in the first seven days, you're going to get your portfolio evaluated. You've got it for life. You're going to get me suggesting the goals, given your risk reward profile, going to educate you and provide you the education, the research, track it. We're going to float this company, by the way. I want to get uh, a thousand people going through this in batches of 10, all right? Um, and I'm gonna be teaching them afterwards. They're gonna have other teachers, not you guys, the others in future around the world will, because I can't do everybody. You guys will have me for life. Uh, you won't have any subscription costs. Uh, all updates, and there's daily updates. Every single day there's updates. And if you think that's too many, you can look at the weekly ones and the monthly ones as well, all right? And there's lots of free software as well. There's no charges. The mentoring from me, okay, once one. That's why I've got to limit it to 10. This is probably my most successful person. I took her from an English language student 
to uh, a fund manager. And then she went to work for Newton, who gave her 10 billion to manage. 10 billion. Okay, 10 with a B to manage, right? Yeah, so I'm proud of that. That's how we're going to do it. 10 places, uh, and you get it's a one off fee. We're doing it as a one off fee at the moment for everybody. In future, for other people, it's going to be a subscription base because that's if you want to float a company in the stock market, what you've got to do. Uh, and it's heavily discounted. It's heavily discounted because I want to prove to venture capital investors and the market that this model works. And it does work. That does work. Uh, and I know this because we've never, ever had a single person ever say uh, in the money back period, it's not for me. Nobody's ever asked uh, for their money back. And you've got seven day money back on this. 10 people, and you get 50% off on it. I think it's a billion dollar company that we're going to be creating. Uh, okay, so if you want to sign up, I'll tell you where you go. I'll put it on the screen. It is first come, first serve, the first 10. And we've never had a webinar where all, all 10 seats haven't gone either. Okay, and I'll explain what it is in a second. There, uh, there is, there is, it's yours for life. There's no ongoing charges uh, as well. So if you've liked what I've said, my mission to take it global, not through books, all the books have now been converted into the videos and one-to-one -one conferences with me. Because what we realized is people don't learn off books and magazines. And we thought, what price should we put it? It's not 90,000, don't worry. 90,000 is the value we've estimated it at based on all of this stuff. Access to the portfolios, the Goldman Sachs reports, all the free data, all the monthly newsletters, the free software, the WhatsApp and everything else. That's what we worked as well. Um, uh, to, 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 to. Uh, I don't understand what you mean, Derek. Just explain that on the SIP thing. Just let me know what you mean. You manage your own. You're managing your own investments. You're not going to be paying any monthly, weekly fees at all. Um, you can use any SIP provider you've got. It don't have to be a SIP or an ISA. You might just have a portfolio. You know, that's where you go. That is where you go. And you can do it in installments if you wish and still have access. And there is a seven day no risk money back guarantee. In those seven days, I'm going to have the first two calls with you. We're going to evaluate your portfolio uh, and you're going to be wowed. And then we're going to give you access to all the program and all the information as well. You are going to get full access to all of those things as well that you can see on screen, including if you want deep dive on the education. The funny thing is the, the the people who come on to this, they don't do the education, but they just do the one to one calls with me and go through it. And that's fine, because what I've realized is you can't just dump people with a book and say, hey, go away, read this. It's not university. We're, we're in a fast moving world. They want to have that one to one with me. And people say to me, oh, how much time have you got? When people are making money, they don't need to keep having calls with you. They can have as many calls as they wish with me. They can have as many calls as they wish with me. OK, there's not an issue uh, with that at all. Uh, my goal, 40 percent per annum, is what I have for myself and my global stocks. And it's that simple. Uh, if you want the 50% off, which I assume you do, use that coupon code. Use that coupon code. Okay. Uh, when you go on, you can, by the way, use a disc, um, you can use installments if you wish, not an issue. And you'll see the price comes right down, uh, there if you're under three. Uh, thousand if you're using a discount code. If you're outside the EU, there's no VAT and we use global stocks. And I mentioned some of the ones I already own uh, already. I have not mentioned Tech Target and Globum. I think I mentioned Square. There's three other names that I still own. That's the ones we found out of this. Um, uh, I don't think you can, Derek. I don't think you can take capital out of your SIP pre-retirement. Um, so no, I don't think you'd be able to do that. Uh, uh, the, the sort of in a SIP, you can only buy stocks and you can't take money out of a SIP before retirement. Out of an ISA, you can, and obviously out of a bank account, you can, but out of a SIP, they don't let you do that. Um, they only let you buy certain um, assets in a SIP. That's the law. That's the, you know, when the government worked it all out, that's the way they did it. What I want you to take away from this webinar, everyone, and I've given you that education, um, is this. Yeah, after 55. Um, uh, 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 is this filter, 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 valuation, growth, income. Okay, ask me any other questions as well, guys. Income, cash flow, sortino. Um, uh, 
Uh, yeah, John said it as well, 55. I mean, I, I don't know why I said I think you can't. I don't know why I said I think. I know you can't. I mean, everybody knows. Sorry, not everybody, but yeah, you know. Um, uh, I forgot it was 55. I, I still, for some reason, thought it was 57. I think it had been staggered, hadn't it, with um, ages and drawdowns and stuff. Oh, if you're in a drawdown, then yes, you could, um, Derek. Then you could. But what you would do is you'd withdraw it from your SIP um, into your account, if you see what I mean. So yeah, if you're in a draw, if you're over 55, then you can speak to your SIP provider about that. Before you ever take capital out of a SIP, you should always speak to um, an advisor on pensions, you know, a specialist, to say, "I want to take something out and and, and get you know um, uh, traditional advice on taking capital out." Um, you know, because a lot of people what they started doing is taking money out of their SIP and buying Ferraris and stuff, and and it's like, wait a minute, you know, you're going to live to about a hundred, don't you? Uh, as well. Um, uh, oh, kids ask me, how do you invest the one and a half thousand each month or wait until the end of the year to invest the 18K? Um, it's either way. You see, if you've got capital coming each month, you wouldn't want to just not invest it until the end of the year, would you? So if you've got it coming every month, then it's fine to say, well, you know what? I'll just put it in each month because you don't want it sitting idle, do you? You don't want it sitting idle. Um, and that's the point. By the way, um, if any of you are having difficulties getting on, because a lot of people going on the website can sometimes block the site, um, those are the sort of account details uh, as well. Um, I said something about Microsoft, I missed that. Oh, uh, but, 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 um, for me, um, IH, um, you can go, if you want to download the research report, IH, and that's where you'll find the stuff from me. Um, if you um, look on uh, uh, alpishpatel.com, um, you'll see uh, I've got, it says on alpishpatel.com free, right? There'll be three boxes which say free this, free that, free that. Go onto all three of those boxes and that's where you'll find all my free stuff, including um, uh, uh, anything free that I'm mentioning and you know webinars that I'm giving and all the other stuff that I've mentioned as well, okay? Uh, in all of that, you'll see uh, the, 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 the free stuff. You've got alpishfell.com. If you still can't find it, it's under the picture of me with um, the Duchess of Cambridge. Talk about name dropping. Um, it, it, that's where you'll find the free stuff. Okay, so anything free you want, you'll 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 find it all on there. You'll have to just sign into those um, uh, IH uh, to find it. Okay, so you'll 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 find it there. Uh, uh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I want to thank um, thank you, Adrian, uh, Andy, Phil, David. Um, Beatrix, thank you, and Terence, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let me know as you sign up others um, so I can give you a shout out. Any other questions, let me know. I am more than happy to answer anything at all. I'm gonna go backwards through the slides now, okay? Just because it's a useful thing to do during the course of a webinar, I found people find it really helpful if I go through the slides in sort of reverse, as it were. Um, uh, uh, they've just found it helpful because it just reinforces some of the stuff that I've said, okay? Um, there's Naomi. Uh, uh, Part-time opera singer, funnily enough. Right, um, yeah, this is what we're gonna do with you, and it's yours for life. Oh, uh, let me reiterate that, um, Desmond. It is yours for life. All updates, and they're daily. If they're too, if daily is too much, you can look at it weekly, monthly, and the Zoom calls as many as you want with me. Yeah, I know. Why am I making it so ridiculously no-brainer? Because when you're launching something you believe in and you think it's going to be a game changer around the world and a potential billion dollar entity, yeah, you want to make it an absolute no-brainer, okay? Uh, uh, to, I mean, Google gives a free search engine. That's a no-brainer. It's free, and it's a trillion dollar company. You see what I mean? You try and make things as no-brainer as possible, okay? And that's what I did with that. Uh, 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 but yeah, you join me on LinkedIn as well. Um, uh, if you're an apprentice or a student, join me on LinkedIn uh, so that you can uh, uh, connect with my network and see the, the rest of the stuff about me on there as well. That's how we're gonna connect, Zoom, Skype. In future, we're gonna do it in person as well. Um, Ah, IH, um, bu, 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 uh, oh, it's a good point actually, you've reminded me about something. So with this, you're also gonna get, everybody who signs up also gets a signed copy of uh, my book, Investing Unplugged, and you also get uh, uh, 
earphones so you can read the and you can go through the course material wherever you are so apple like that they're, they're like the apple ones and you can put the phone on a stand so you can most people don't actually fun enough to do the course material they just do the one-to-one -one calls with me and the software sheets uh and all the spreadsheet stuff that i showed you earlier they uh do instead uh, uh and i'll show you the spreadsheet in just one second there it is they just like to go through this and talk through it so i convert their portfolio into this format and i show them mine and then educate them on the background education's the key i um, i think it's all about trading i'm not going to confuse people with trading and investing on this if you don't mind um i'm going to just talk about in investing on this one okay uh like i said that's one of the strategies and i talk walk people through it i've got um, a couple of people they happen to be younger who want to do this and that's fine uh the the two times leverage uh, investing strategy. So I educate them on that and I tell them about the risks, risks, risk of leverage. Uh, I also give them the data on anything and everything that we look at. So every piece of data. Uh, for those of you who just want to sort of track me for free, just go to arpistrell.com and there's lots of places. Uh, if you're on my email list, you're already going to get my newsletter anyway for free. And I'll mention in my monthly newsletter, fortnightly newsletter, what I like and, and stuff. So um, you've got that sort of uh, on there. Uh, anyway, cash flow, 15 stocks. Why? Why we look at cash flow? Uh, that itself, thanks to them, gives us 30%. We're only looking then to get a subset of those companies to get us to the 40%. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Not every year is going to be 30%. I can tell you, 2008 wasn't. I'd be a freaking, I'd be a freak if in 2008 I got 30%. Anybody would be. Uh, uh, 2008, when the financial market crash happened, we didn't, uh, neither did they. Okay, seven, eight, right? Um, and that's the point, you're not gonna. But what happens is it's it's averages at that. Why? Because some years you get more, some years you get less. Why? Because once you've got your 30% pedestal, right, which is where croaky gets you, you then use a subset of those companies and earnings valuation to get you the extra 10% to 40%, simple as that. Right. Uh, Altman, I'm not going to cover on this. It doesn't really matter. Just going backwards, not just any analyst. They've got to be at the big banks, sizable uh, and recent and not just one of them. So journalists will often just pick one and say, oh, Merrill Lynch has just upgraded X, Y, Z stock. That is not enough. Please don't do that. Let me tell you what you shouldn't do. Don't do that. Don't just look at analysts from magazines, journalists or stockbrokers. They don't have the influence, right? Write that down. Do not look at the analyst predictions and forecasts from magazines uh, 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 or stockbrokers. They don't have the oomph. When we looked at, say, the Citigroup one, it was because it was the biggest banks and the average taken of them, and it followed other strategies, valuation, growth, income, dividend deals, in other words, and cash flow, right? When we drill down on which were the highest impact out of the quality companies on the index trackers, it was because they also turned up in other areas. I only do leverage on Amazon, Microsoft, um, Costco, Dollar General, <sighs> Apple, and the S&P 500, okay? Uh, and this was recent. This was my this is my son's portfolio, by the way, and he's um, two years old. So this is recent. And actually, that this is out of date because if you follow the S and P, you'll know that this year alone, um, three times leverage has doubled your money. Uh, this is from March earlier on. I need to update some of this stuff uh, from him. But anyway, if you look at these, you'll know um, the S and P five hundred. You can check it yourself. Uh, three times leverage just shot up uh, for it. Let me see if I can pull it up actually online. His account. Uh, I'll pull up his account if I can. So if I can log in and talk at the same time. If I can log in and talk at the same time. Uh, so that's the leverage big on there. This was how we found United Healthcare because it was strategy two, which was the gurus. And just because, like I said, put lobby oh, Warren Buffett just bought this stock. Warren Buffett just sold this. It's not important unless the impact in percentage terms. And not just him, but a bunch of others as well did the same transaction at the same time. Otherwise, you just do not have enough data, I'm afraid. You just do not have enough data. I'm going to see if I can pull this up. <laughs> right, sorry, I'm just trying to put the password in without saying it out loud. Oh, shit. Uh, no, I can't. Um, Okay, so I'm going to try and show you his portfolio now, uh, the updated one. There we go. Okay, don't lip read the password on me. 
okay let me see if i can do it junior isa there he is the little sprog he makes more money than i bloody did the little bugger okay so i'll tell you what he's got uh his apple's up 106 percent this year um no sorry since he got into it since i bought it for him uh and i'm having a problem accessing this bloody thing Okay, anyway, I'll come back to his in a second. Uh, what else has he got? The Amazon Globant he's got, um, and United Healthcare he's got. United, uh, of those, his Globant has done really well. Uh, it's an Argentinian company uh, in software. It's a billion dollar company. And that's how I find the ones which are less well known. Uh, I want them to be large market cap on the whole. I want the names to keep coming up amongst. Uh, uh, hedge fund ownership and big money going behind them as well. So the guru buys, okay? So to recap, 12 months, 25 from the highest. Why? Because it keeps it simple for you. Uh, I want the names to keep coming up over and over and over again in different sources, okay? I want them to keep coming up. I don't trust fund managers for the reasons I've already told you. I don't do name recognition because this is what most people's portfolios and pension funds bloody look like, and it is awful, okay? And the reason I look at those global companies as well on uh, uh, on US markets, not just UK, because it can go in my sit, but also the poverty gap is massive. And this is just uh, in the last five years, it's over a hundred and what is that? 130% gap between, and that's just an index tracker. And we keep telling you, they keep writing about it. Okay, so there you go. And that's, that's the target for my son uh, as well. Let me just go into mine and just, Re just iterate, reiterate some of the ones from my one. Um, it's because I've not updated it. Uh, I need to log out of his account and go into mine. Log out, there you go, log out. Okay, uh, those are the figures. And it's a very simple business plan. Okay, I do not spend my time looking at the portfolio every single day. I don't. I just don't. Why would I? It's I need the companies to brew over a period of time. I need them to brew over a period of time. So I want the names to keep coming up on those secret sources, as I call them, you know, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, all of those ones. I need the companies to keep coming up on those secret sources, because if they don't uh, come up on those as well as the others, then I'm screwed. Um, I'm screwed in the sense that I'm not filtering properly. OK, so it's my job to get that data um and provide it um sorry i can never remember passwords Let's see if that works okay and yes we know certain things were important right certain things okay so i'll tell you which ones as well for this which you might not be familiar with and which you might not know um square tech target i've mentioned trade desk Okay, and net company he owns as well. Um, I own net company as well. So I, I might overlap what he has with mine. Okay, uh, and you better believe I'm, I look after my son. Um, PayPal I've still got and Paycom I've got and Globan. Don't just go out and buy these when I bought them. Since I bought them, they're all doing incredibly well, but it doesn't mean, and I'm, I bought this, this was done in March. So in March, they might run out um, again, but you know, there you go, I've given you some names uh, for those who stayed to the end. Uh, uh, but, but, but so we did that research and we found that there were certain countries which tended to generate certain better returns. Uh, we found that there was, there you go, there was not just certain countries which did better return, but we found on that research that certain criteria like book value of certain valuations tended to give you better returns, 30% average return. So not just Crokey and Deutsche Bank, but book value gave you better returns. OK, um, how is it best to invest for a child under 18 years? Kid, I think the best way is a junior ISA. And the reason for that is it's tax free. Um, so the growth each year, let's say you sell a share. Um, let's say you make 100 percent like Rian has done in um, Amazon in the past. Since he was born, he's made 100 percent. He's made more than that, but say he's made 100 percent. So he's doubled his money. Let's say I then sold that. I'd get or he'd get taxed on it. Um, OK, in theory, uh, he'd get taxed. So over the years, I don't want him to get taxed. So a junior ISA is best. Uh, what you're asking is which broker. Now, let's say you don't want to do ISAs and you don't want to do SIPs, you just want a broker. Then there are brokers out there um, 
uh, it, uh, I, I've put them all on the free resources that I have. So if you look at upshbell.com and the free bits, you'll see I've listed the broker sites on one of those sites. And I can't remember which, but anyway, Halifax, Barclays, AJ Bell, um, Hargreaves, they're all much of a muchness, to be honest. Um, fees slightly different. There's a new one called Free Trade uh, as well. Just try, don't get deviated into them forcing you to try and trying to make you trade. Some of them will try and make you trade when actually you should be investing. Okay, um, this research report, I promised all of you, you'll get this uh, at the end of the webinar. I've got no connections with Tweedy Brown, just so you know, it's just that they did the research and it's the research part of which was a special part of what we used. Uh, as well, because theirs was the most definitive research um, done in this field, because they looked at every single investment approach. Uh, so it's a 60 page study. So if you go to arpospital.com, um, you'll see there's three little bars on there. I will show you that. Uh, just give me one second. I'll show you that. Uh, okay, you will see there's three bars if you go into arpospital.com. Um, if you want to download the report, just go to. Uh, this one, the middle one. Well, go on all of them, but, you know, go go to that one. Uh, uh, and when you go there uh, from alpishpatel.com, you will get the, for free, you will get the report. Uh, where is it, Alpish? I can't see it. There in big fat writing. What has worked in investing? Studies and investment approaches with exceptional returns. 60-page research report. Free. It's yours. Free. Okay, it's there. It's there. There, 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 there. So how did you get there, Alpish? Tell me again. You went to alpishpatel.com. That picture of me with the uh, Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. I'm sort of um, explaining investments to them or showing them around. Okay, right, guys, I'm going to go now because I spent 90 minutes and that's, uh, uh, and I've got 10 um, apprentices, nine or 10, 10, I think, um, who I um, now want to go and on board. So I'm going to send you all uh, a message, all of you signed up, and we're going to start working on your portfolio. We're going to schedule the first call. Uh, what day is it today? Wednesday. So we're going to schedule the first call, obviously not New Year's Day, uh, maybe tomorrow if you've got time um, or Monday failing that. So we get get on with it and within. Oh, and you get to keep the, the book and everything else. Uh, anyway. OK, guys, I'm going to go. Thank you all very much. Hope you found it enlightening. Um, please follow what I've said, because people have been doing it um, in their hundreds of thousands around the world. All right. They've been doing it in their hundreds of thousands following it so please please do follow uh, the education follow the education follow the education and the research thank you all for being on the webinar